So you're telling me I can have a pre-made keto-friendly cheesecake in my freezer with a perfect portion size whenever I want? And cookie dough too? Oh hell yeah. <laughs> Listen, okay, you know I love Enlightened, not a secret. I even put them on my list of keto products that I recommend and nothing makes the list unless it tastes amazing and it is great ingredients that I feel like are safe on a keto journey because let's get real, there are a lot of keto products out there with really iffy ingredients. There are even things that are keto certified that I look at the ingredients and I'm like, how? Let's get back to the star of the show. Obviously, it is the new drop that is keto friendly. I'm so happy that Enlightened is really getting on the keto train. First, they came out with their ice creams. Then they have these products. So we have the cookie dough bites and we have the cheesecakes. They are, listen, I'm not even gonna pretend because I wasn't going to waste my time filming this video without trying them in advance. <laughs> And I've only tasted one of the cheesecakes and it is hot fire flames. Spoiler alert, if you want to click out now, it's fine. But I haven't tried any of the other flavors. And with anything like this, where it's an ice cream line, etc., dessert line, some flavors are going to be better than others. So I thought it would be really fun to do another taste test video because you guys seem to really enjoy those. I've done one for Enlightened Ice Creams before, I've done one for Rebel before. Um, they're some of my most popular videos, so I figure Let's just appeal to the masses and tell you exactly what I think. Before we get into it, make sure you like this video. It really helps my channel. It tells YouTube that you care about this kind of content and will show you more of my content, as well as if you are not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe for more content just like this and make sure that you ring the notification bell because again, you wanna be alerted to every little new thing that I'm putting out there because let's get real, who doesn't wanna watch me eat keto stuff and tell you if it sucks or not? No? No? I have educational, nutrition-based content as well as keto recipes or keto-friendly recipes and just videos that will help you learn a little bit more about how nutrition really works and which products that even if they're labeled keto, maybe aren't necessarily safe on a keto diet. You can't trust marketing. Speaking of that, I am including a link down below in the description bar to download my absolutely free carb to keto swap list. Things don't make the list unless I think that they taste amazing, would fool a non-keto person, or have safe ingredients. And that's the main thing because just because something says it's keto doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna help you on your keto journey. You might actually end up gaining from a lot of these things. It's actually really scary. So let's get into it, shall we? First, I wanna go over the nutrition facts and the ingredients, because I think that's super important, obviously. So for the fudge flavored enlightened keto dough bites, these are technically 12 grams of carbs per serving, and there are two and a half servings per container. So when it says snackable straight out of the bag, I don't recommend that. I don't recommend with anything that you just take the bag to the couch. That is step number one to go gaining weight, no matter even if you're eating keto or not. You really wanna portion things out, put them in a separate bowl, then take it to the couch. That way you can mindlessly eat and know that you're eating the exact right portion that you intend to. No more mindlessly eating, really. At least you can circumvent that. That's a pro tip from a nutritionist for you. The serving size is 24 pieces, so I'm assuming that these pieces are pretty small, considering this seems like something that would be great to put on your enlightened ice cream or any other brand of ice cream that you particularly like. I like that there's a lot of calcium and potassium in this, 140 milligrams of potassium, fascinating. Uh, three milligrams of iron, go figure. Okay, I love it. We've done the digging for you and bagged up those delicious bites with just two net carbs per serving and no added sugar. So basically, you can turn any ice cream flavor into cookie dough, that's the idea. I think these are just like separated from their cookie dough flavored ice creams and they just bag them up for you, which is convenient if you are into that. So there are three grams of fiber and four grams of erythritol and then three grams of allulose. So when you subtract three plus four plus three from 12, that leaves two because that's 10. <laughs> I can do math. So if you are a net carb person, it's two net carbs per serving. 
12 grams of carbs for something like this, if you're a total carb person, isn't that bad in my opinion. So we got almonds, Dutch cocoa, erythritol, cream cheese, allulose, butter, milk protein isolate, non-GMO corn fiber, natural flavor, carob bean gum, xanthan gum, guar gum, <laughs> salt, and monk fruit extract. Well, I'm not a fan of a lot of gums, they're not gonna affect you. Um, some people can be a little iffy on corn fiber. It really is gonna be dependent person to person. I wouldn't necessarily steer a client away from this. If you found that you started to get kind of weird indigestion after eating it, then maybe this isn't the product for you. But again, it's gonna be person to person and for some people it's totally fine. Otherwise, I love that almonds are the first ingredient, then cocoa, erythritol, cream cheese, butter. I mean, we are really killing it here in terms of ingredients. It's 90 calories per serving, seven grams of fat, two net carbs, and four grams of protein. It's perfect for keto macros. So let's give it a taste. Okay, so yeah, this is basically the bites that are in their ice cream. They look like kibble, let's get real, but you're not in it for how it looks. My first impression is that they're really tasty, but they're a little soft. So I don't see myself grabbing a handful of these because it's not satisfying that like crunchy factor for something that's like typically small and snackable like that. Editing Samantha here. This is because I literally would let, let them sit out for forever before I ate them. They're meant to be eaten straight out of the freezer and I've done that since then and it's hot fire flames. So eat them right out of the freezer. What I think this would be great for is topping your yogurt with it. I love making homemade yogurt. Um, if you want to check out my friend Aaron's video about how he makes his keto-friendly yogurt, I will link it in the cards above and down below because I literally make that every week. Um, this would be great to top that. Taste-wise, hot fire flames. This tastes really, really, really good. This is the fudge flavor. Let's move on to peanut butter. The macros are a little bit different on this one. It's still two grams of net carbs, but the fat goes from seven to eight and the protein goes from four to six. So this is a slightly more caloric bag, 110 calories. Peanut butter. I'm a sucker for peanut butter. Love peanut butter. <sighs> These are hot fire flames, y'all. These are seriously addicting. And I think because inherently, can I talk with my mouth full anymore, Samantha? And I think it's because inherently, peanut butter is sweet but also salty. So for me, it really hits that like sweet salty thing. Love. So far, this is in first place. Not that fudge is bad. Next, we have chocolate chip. This one is 90 calories, seven grams of fat, five grams of protein, slightly more carbs. This one is still two net carbs, but because there's more fiber. So it's a little bit more in total carbs. Chocolate chip. All right, let's see. Not my favorite. This is in third place. <laughs> not gonna elaborate anymore. That one's just not my favorite. That I think I recognize from some of the ice creams. And to be honest, I love Enlightened, but the cookie dough ones are some of my least favorite because I don't want the cookie dough bites. But these two are awesome. The chocolate chip one's just not, not for me. Birthday cake. This one is again, 90 calories, six grams of fat, five grams of protein, two net carbs, 13 total carbs. So again, slightly different. Ingredients for all of these are fairly similar for each one. It gets to be down to the bottom when things change. This one has, for example, vegetable and fruit juices, spirulina, etc. So there's a little bit more erythritol, I think, in this one than some of the others. These need to go back in the freezer ASAP. Okay, so this one is very sweet. If you're into very sweet things, I think typically if you're into like a birthday cake flavor, this is definitely delivering on that. This isn't my go-to flavor normally, so it's not gonna be my go-to flavor here, but it tastes better than, in my opinion, like the, oh, it has a weird, weird. It can taste the spirulina at the end. It has like that vegetable taste. And there's also turmeric in this. And then that's where I think they're getting the colors for the sprinkle, let's just throw our food on the ground. I think that in order to keep it like natural, that's what they're doing. They're using spirulina and turmeric to make like this like green 
and yellowy sprinkle, but I taste the spirulina at the end. If you were topping this, maybe it would be more masked, but be aware of that. Ooh. It tastes like those vegetable green pirate's booty. Weird. At first it's sweet, but then it goes savory. Might be your jam. Really weird. I would still not put it last because of that. This is my recommendation order. Oh, I still have one more. Let's see. So last we have Snickerdoodle. 90 calories, seven grams of fat, four grams of protein, two net carbs. Yeah, these can't stay out very long. Just be aware. Snickerdoodle. Mmm. These are really good. If you like Snickerdoodle, it tastes exactly like that. Really clean flavor. What's interesting to me is that cinnamon isn't one of the ingredients. Weird, maybe that's what natural flavor is. Okay. Tastes good though. Not much to say about it. It tastes very snickerdoodly. It's not too sweet, which I like. So this one's going here. This is my order. Peanut butter is by far the best. Fudge is a close second. Then like trailing behind is snickerdoodle followed by birthday cake slash vegetable. Okay. And then chocolate chip is by far like all the way over here. Like, I don't like that. But for a lot of people, I could see it being like this. So be aware, not every flavor is gonna be a winner and that's why I like doing these taste test videos. So that, you know, if you are in line with me and my preferences based off of other videos I have, we can get in line on here too. And that way you know which ones to order. And by the way, you can use my code Samantha. It's not an affiliate code. I don't get any commission from it. Wish I did enlightened, just saying. And uh, you can save uh, money on your order. So it's just a coupon code. Use it or don't use it. I don't benefit from it whatsoever. And now for the cheesecakes that are probably hot and melted. Cause I live in a hundred degree Octobers in California. I'm gonna be real with you. These are hot fire flames. So this is the classic cheesecake. No sugar added, two net carbs. The calories are 210 calories. And so far I can see that they're all roughly about that. The only one that's a little bit more is the chocolate caramel. And then the one that's a little bit less is strawberry is 180. So for this one, it's 20 grams of fat, 18 grams of total carbs, eight grams of erythritol, one gram of dietary fiber, and four grams of protein. They don't list allulose on nutrition labels, so they have to tell you how many grams of allulose separately. So one gram of fiber plus eight grams of erythritol plus seven grams of allulose. When you subtract all that from 18 total carbs, that ends up with two net carbs. But I want to remind you that just because something is two net carbs, you still have to keep total carb count into your brain and take that into account. Do I recommend eating these every day? No. Are they a great replacement for a treat? Yes. The same way that I treat keto treats is the way that I would if I was a keto. So would I be eating ice cream every night if I wasn't doing this lifestyle? No, because inherently you know that's not great for you. But can I do it like a few times a week? Yeah. And it's not going to hurt me because it's keto. Hopefully that makes sense. If you want to know more about that, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a whole video about whether or not you should do total carbs or net carbs. I already have one. I'll have it up here, but my thoughts on it have kind of shifted over the years, especially after being a certified nutritionist and working with clients for a while. I can see certain things that need to be taken into account and you can't really just do net carbs. So what's really cool about these is that they're already done. If they're frozen, you can microwave them to thaw them out a little bit, or I just recommend leaving them out at room temperature for a hot second. And they're so good. They still have the feel good facts on the box. It's illegal to frighten pigeons in Massachusetts. Good to know. Tainer it comes in. You could even save these. It's like a little baby crock pot. They're hard plastic. And then when you open them up, so stinking cute. I can't. These are so adorable. I love these little containers. You can save these and wash them and use them for other things because they're pretty sturdy. They're not like Tupperware, but dang near close. And I love how everyone has a little bit of whipped cream. The ingredients are cream, milk, erythritol, eggs, allulose, almonds, butter, coconut, whey protein, natural flavor, modified cornstarch, carob bean gum, guar gum, carrageenan, not my favorite ingredient, cellulose gel, cellulose gum, xanthan gum, salt, cheese culture, 
sodium citrate, and bacterial culture. First half of the ingredients list is hot fire flames. This is like what I would put in my homemade cheesecakes. I was gonna make like a cheesecake mug cake. The back end are what give it that really authentic cheesecake texture that maybe otherwise you wouldn't achieve. And probably it's also helpful for preservative sake, you know, the fact that it stays in its shape, etc. Is it my favorite? No, but again, we're not eating these every single day, right? So it's totally fine, in my opinion, in moderation. Let's give it a taste. I'm gonna try and get like a perfect bite of everything. And what's great about these also is that there's a crust on the bottom, which I love. It's not just like the cheesecake by itself, which is usually what you would find in a low carb situation. Okay, right off the bat, very cheesy. It tastes very cheese forward, almost to the point of being savory a little bit. I'm very particular about cheesecakes, I will say. I think I have the best recipe ever for <laughs> keto cheesecake. I will link it down below for you. You can go check out my Instagram post that has all of that. Go follow me on Instagram if you're not already, by the way. By the way. So I, I am warning you, I'm a little bit picky. Uh, this is very cheesy. This would not be probably my first choice, but if I were to top it with like some chocolate sauce or even one of those um, cookie dough bites, it would uh, sweeten it up a little bit. I just think it's not quite sweet enough and it's leaning towards sort of like a ricotta, really cheesy flavor, almost like the way white cheddar tastes. Is it bad? No. Would it, is it gonna be my favorite of all these flavors? Probably not. Next. Perfect for the season, pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, y'all, gotta love that. Pumpkin is relatively high on the uh, ingredients list, which makes me think that's great. Like a little bit of extra pumpkin never hurt nobody. The same two grams of nut carbs for all of these, you guys, that goes for every single one. <laughs> this one looks a little funky. All right, let's give this a taste. I like pumpkin cheesecakes, so. Mm. At first I wasn't sure if I liked it, but the pumpkin flavor really comes through after the first second. I'm guessing that the crust is the almonds. It's like an almond crust. This is good. This tastes like cheesecake and pumpkin pie had a baby. So if you like both of those things, I think you'll really like it. And especially if you're like really jealous of all of like the fun pumpkin things that come out of the grocery store and Trader Joe's specifically, let's get real. You can like still experience that with these little guys. So I think that's awesome. Again, pumpkin pie is not my favorite thing. Pumpkin actually in general isn't my favorite flavor, but I like that. The next three are the ones I'm really more excited about. We have chocolate cheesecake. If I can ever open this box. Okay, I'm super psyched for this one because I love chocolatey things. That's my go-to for dessert time. And this one looks like it has like a chocolate crust, which is fun. Slightly different macros on this one, but not bad. That's really satisfying. It's not too chocolatey, but it does have a dark chocolate flavor. It's not like sickeningly sweet. It definitely has that more bitter chocolate flavor that I prefer. So if you want something really sweet, this isn't going to be for you. But so far, that's definitely my favorite, even though I could not. Open the box. Next, this is the one that I tried first because it just seemed like, come on. Caramel chocolate cheesecake. Uh, I already had this one and I really liked it. But now that I've had the other ones, I can't really figure out how I would rate it. This one's fun because it has chocolate chips and then the caramel base. It's definitely the prettiest upon opening. This one has a chocolate base. This one is the sweetest by far, by far. So if you like really sweet things, I would recommend this one. If you're somebody who feels like um, sugar-free sweeteners are kind of like cloying and you don't like that, you're not gonna like this one. I like this one, but I think it has to be like one of those things where I'm definitely eating it by itself. And I have to be really in the mood for something sweet because it does have a little bit of that aftertaste from something being overly sweetened, whereas these ones are very mild. So it's really just gonna depend on your preference. I think flavor-wise, this one is the best. I wish it was a little bit less sweet because I don't like sweet things, but flavor-wise, it's really solid. So you're gonna have to be the best judge of whether this one's for you. And last but not least, we have the lowest calorie one at 180 calories and only 17 grams of fat compared to the 19 and 20 or 21 is the strawberry cheesecake, whole classic. Okay, right off the bat, this one does not look visually appealing at all. It's like a jelly top. It's not bright red. Uh, it's not my favorite, most appetizing to look at. It caught me really off guard when I opened the top, but I'm willing to eat anything if it tastes good, so. Looks gonna be deceiving. Oh, it smells good though. Ooh, it smells like jelly from the fridge. Looks gonna be deceiving, y'all. 
This one's the best one. This one is fire. You have the really sweet jelly on top, and then you have like the traditional cheesecake formula, I'm guessing, on the bottom. It's the best calorically. It's the best macro-wise. Still two grams of net carbs, lower fats. Never judge a book by its cover, y'all, because this to me is definitely leaps and bounds number one. That one is awesome. If I'm going to rate them in order, obviously this guy is number one. Depending on your preferences, these two are tied. So if you were to say like a little bit less sweet stuff, a little bit more dark chocolate flavor, I would go here. Then maybe this would be your third place. If it's the other way around, then second place, third place, up to you. Then I would put pumpkin, which is a really close third place, fourth place, you know, depending on how you're looking at it. And then cheesecake, well, not bad, is my least favorite. It's just because it's the least sweet. I feel like it needs a little bit more something going on with it to brighten it up. Um, I thought the cheese flavor was a little forward, borderline on savory, but if you add any of these guys to it, I think you're golden. So, thank you. Thanks for that. So that does it for this taste test and review of the new Keto Enlightened Collection. I am so excited about this. Every day that we come out with good ingredient keto replacement foods is a day of victory. But please remember another word of caution, just because something says it's keto doesn't mean it's good for you and doesn't mean that the ingredients actually are keto safe or that they will help you on your journey. There are a lot of hidden weird ingredients that you might not even know what to look for. So when in doubt, feel free to download my absolutely free carb to keto replacement list. Everything on that list, like I said, has been taste tested by me and I love it and its ingredients are solid. Sometimes the ingredients are solid but it tastes like butt or sometimes it tastes amazing but the ingredients are super sketchy and that's why it tastes so good. So if it's on the list, you can feel safe about it. Go ahead and download it down below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what other videos you would like me to do and I will see you next time on my channel. Peace out, y'all.